Hi folks, one of my fiance's favorite flowers are sweet peas. And this year for her birthday, I wanted to get her a little kind of sweet pea support frame. I went online and spent quite a while looking and could find absolutely nothing that was reasonably priced and had decent reviews. So today I'm gonna to build my own and it's gonna be very much inspired by my good friend, Steve uh, from Greenside Up who did something very similar. I'm basically going to be copying his design and it's going to be going on this back fence. This is the work site and I wanted to just get one thing out of the way right at the start. You know, you might be thinking, why not just put a trellis, you know, a traditional trellis up on these fence posts and then trail the sweet peas up there. And to be honest, it's because this fence is not ours and it's pretty much at the end of its lifespan, just over here, you can see what happened in a storm the other day. So I don't wanna be fixing anything to these fence posts and fence panels because it probably won't still be there in summer when the sweet peas are in full bloom. Now, what do we need for today's job? Well, I've got four fence posts over here and I just treated these yesterday with an oil-based preservative. You don't have to do that, but I just prefer to be a little bit better safe than sorry and it's gonna match the rest of the raised beds that we've got in the garden. These are relatively small fence posts. They're the 75 centimeter ones. And what else do you need? Well, this shouldn't be too complicated. I've just got a cutter, a tape measure, uh, some timber drives, which are kind of a hex head timber bolt. I just find these are like the safest thing to use with timber, but you don't have to use these at all. These are probably slightly overkill. Need a hammer for the staples. Need a drill, obviously, and in here, we've got the main stuff, which is a welded metal mesh, some staples, and a little cutter for the mesh as well. The design itself for this couldn't really be much simpler. I'm gonna have two uprights and then two kind of cross beams. One's gonna go at the top and one's gonna go kind of somewhere further down just to strengthen it. And these are gonna be tied in to these kind of little planters at the base here. If you didn't have these, then you'd probably wanna put them in the ground and you can either just dig them straight in, but they're gonna rot a little bit quicker or you can use ground spikes or postcrete or whatever suits. And obviously you're just gonna cut these to size. This is gonna be pretty substantial. And it means we can get a nice row of sweet peas in the back of both the beds, but also there's a little mini growing area in the middle. So I'm gonna get these cut to size pretty much. This is a 2.4 meter length. So we only wanna come up to about 1.8 meters. That's around the height of sweet peas, maybe go up to 1.9 or two, just whatever's gonna fit in here. So they are uprights one and two, and then this one, I might be able to just get away with leaving as a 2.4 to sit on top. Although I think I'll have to take just a little bit off. You can see what I mean here. Ties up perfectly at that end. And then just over here, we've got a tiny little overhang, which is the sort of thing that maybe in the allotment I would ignore. But when you're making something for someone else as a gift, you gotta get it perfect, haven't you? So I'm just gonna nip that little edge off. I've been thinking a little bit about the best way to do this. And one of the things to know is that when you add the wire mesh, it adds a huge amount of like structural support and rigidity to something like this. Now the main, the main kind of concern is if I put one or two screws in here, the question is whether or not that is gonna be sufficient to stop it from rocking forward. And especially if this gets really heavy or top heavy, the screws might just kind of snap the wood at the bottom. So what, th what you could do is cut this into little kind of corner support brackets. And I think that would look quite nice. One there, one on the other side, and that would once again tie it into these planters. Now, originally I planned to have the two uprights, one across the top and then one that ties them in across the middle that kind of rested on here. And I was then gonna plumb that into this bed to really make everything secure. And actually, I, I think that it just might not be right. And it will really impact this little miniature growing space we have here. So what I'm gonna do instead is just put some quick 45 degree angles on these and create some kind of support brackets that will be able to tie in to the sleeper quite nicely. One little moment of truth where we see if these are gonna work. I think they should. Perfect. And then having them this way, it means that this is tied in, not just at the bottom into the sleeper, but also here, and I can put a, a screw in here. And it's just gonna, it's just that, that forward motion that we need to protect. If this was dug in, then obviously you wouldn't need to worry about that, but this will just give it that extra bit of support and free up the middle for growing. I'm just gonna do the first pilot hole in here now and get one of the timber locks in and then put the topping on and then I can finish this off properly. To be honest, this is pretty robust. 
to even just one of these timber logs. They're such big, heavy duty screws. That's not really gonna go far, but if you really want to, you can put it forward. So that's what we want to avoid. So this is stable enough now for me to get the top on. And if you can, it's probably a good idea to have more uprights. You know, even just one upright in the middle here would add a lot of support. The one that Steve built had four uprights and then was tied in at the top and also dug into the floor. So that was really all you needed. Now, all I need to do is get those little cross braces in, a couple more screws in the bottom, and then I can just put the mesh on. So now I've got all of the uprights kind of tied in. I've gone with three timber locks right in the bottom, just so it's super stable. And there's still a little bit of play, even with these cross braces. But what that is, is actually just a little bit of play in the sleeper itself as part of the, the planter down here. These aren't actually anchored into the ground, so it's not completely perfect, but it's definitely not gonna go anywhere. So now all I've got to do is get the mesh on and we'll basically have the sweet pea frame ready. This is the part where I say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do projects quite as cool as this. You know, we buy all sorts of stuff in the garden, all sorts of equipment, and my life would be much, much, much harder without all of the support from patrons. So thank you ever so much. An extra special thank you to the Chili Pepper Tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, and Andrew. Unfortunately, it got completely dark, so I had to finish this off and I couldn't film it, but it's the morning after, well, a few mornings after I've got my morning coffee. And I've just, oh, it's been really nice looking out at this from the house. And I just love the, like doing a project like this, which is just focused on spring and summer. When you're in the depths of winter, it's really nice to just keep you, keep you focused on what's coming forward. And the idea of this being absolutely festooned in sweet peas is so, so, so exciting. I'm really glad I made the kind of design changes as I went. And the whole idea of this video really is that it's just a, a bit of an idea for you. You don't have to do it exactly this way. You'll do it to meet your, the requirements of your space and you know whatever you've got going on. But I'm really happy with the way that I've got this little growing area in the middle that we can put things in. It's currently full of forget-me-nots and nigella, but we'll just will probably get a few extra sweet peas in there. So hopefully this thing will be absolutely covered really happy with the little cross designs i think that looks really nice and worst case scenario if this fence behind the, the sweet peas go this is all kind of modular you know so it can come apart really easily or if we've got a few people we can just actually shift the whole lot forward we've just got to take a little bit of earth out of the uh, planters down here so i'm really really pleased with it it's just just being able to look out from the house at this is putting a smile on my face and uh, there's a few other bits I wanted to talk about. The first is that this stuff is quite tricky to work with, actually. I mostly managed to do it just by myself because I could curl it, <laughs> curl it around and kind of tuck it in and it held itself up. But I do recommend when you're doing the mesh, if, you've, if you can get a friend to help you, it's gonna be much, much, much easier. And even with putting all of my weight on it, pulling it as tight as I could, there's a little bulge over here, which isn't great. And I might kind of um, hog tie or hog ring, whatever they're called, uh, these, together just so that in the wind they don't you might get a bit of rattling which might just be a bit annoying but other than having a tiny little bulge that comes out over here it's still going to be functional and you can't really notice it unless you've you know really get your eye in so that's fine the other thing is uh, something I did slightly wrong is the timber lock configuration at the bottom I was just a bit hasty when you do yours make sure they're more evenly spaced other than that uh, the costs pretty cheap compared to comparable you can get like 30 40 quid type things from amazon or wherever um some garden centers 
they don't last very long. You're lucky to get a year or two out of them. Often they're really thin metal, like those arches that you get. Um, they're kind of covered in plastic, but as soon as the water gets in, they just, they just snap like tissue paper. This, I paid about, I don't know, eight or nine pounds for each of the fence posts. This mesh was about 30 quid. There's some left over. Um, what's that, three, 30? It's about 60 pounds, you know, and a little bit extra for the staples or whatever, and screws and what have you. But really, really happy with this, and it's gonna last a lot longer than anything you can buy from a store, I think. I hope, anyway. All you have to do now is make sure you come back in summer and see this absolutely loaded with sweet pea plants. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know if this has helped you or if you're going to do something a bit similar. And hopefully I'll see you again next time.